Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about an educational initiative called Safe Paediatric Anesthesia. In the next 10 minutes, I'll briefly explain the background and then highlight what it has achieved and where it is going. Safe Paediatric Anesthesia is a three-day refresher course. It's aimed primarily at physician and non-physician anesthesia providers in low and middle income countries. So really it's aimed at people who are already anesthesia providers, although it has been used as part of training for physician anesthesia providers. It's based on adult learning principles, and by that we mean predominantly small group case-based discussions, small group workshops, low fidelity simulation, and really very few lectures. The course is often combined with an extra day where we'll aim to train the trainer so that participants who have just completed the course can be trained how to deliver the course themselves. And that's important in trying to achieve local sustainability. The Safe Paediatric Anesthesia course is part of a brand of SAFE courses. SAFE originally stood for Safer Anesthesia from Education. And as I said, Safe Paediatric Anesthesia is housed within this, bigger, within this bigger network of SAFE courses. Initially, it began with an obstetric anesthesia course that was created in 2011 and piloted initially in Uganda and now has a very widespread global reach. Then the Safe Paediatric Anesthesia course began in 2014, again piloted in Uganda. And that was an association between the Association of Anesthetists in England, the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiology and the NGO Mercy Ships. And then more recently in 2018, the SAFE brand expanded a little. So it wasn't no longer SAFE anesthesia from education, but really just encompassed, encompassed the whole idea of SAFE surgery and anaesthesia. So the SAFE operating room was a course that was led by the Royal College of Surgeons in association with the various anaesthesia groups, as well as obstetricians and gynaecologists, nurses and midwife, uh, midwifery governing bodies in England. So what has Safe Paediatric Anesthesia achieved since its conception in 2014? Well, it's achieved quite a wide reach to 24 countries that you can see that are highlighted blue on this map. The countries highlighted in yellow are an example of reverse innovation, and I will talk about that in, in a little bit, where the Safe Paediatric Anesthesia course that was originally developed for participants in low and middle income countries has now been taken to high resource settings because the principles can be applied anywhere. So over the last seven years, we've delivered around 55 courses, which is about one course every six or seven weeks. And that includes the time for COVID where we really haven't traveled at all. And we've trained over 1500 providers and over 250 trainers. And the Safe Pediatric Anesthesia course will often be found together with a safe obstetric anaesthesia course. And if you combine the number of trainers for both courses, it now reaches well over a thousand. The course is accompanied by a very robust monitoring and evaluation plan that's based on the Kirkpatrick model for evaluating educational training courses. And that comprises four levels. The first is the participants reaction to the course, where really you're looking at the, the participants enjoy the experience and was it relevant to their setting and that's based on immediate feedback which often uses things like visual analog scores. Then we can analyse the learning and look at from using before and after knowledge and skills tests to see if those increased and also looking at professional attitudes and the participants desire or commitment to change their personal or institutional practice based on what they've learned. And then the level three and level four of Kirkpatrick are really trying to tap into the ultimate impact, which is changes in behavior and patient outcome or in, and as well as institutional outcome. And looking at these things, you know, three, six, 12, 18, 24 months after a course. 
So the behaviour level is looking at whether you've been able to translate these knowledge and skills into your personal practice by using interviews of the participants, interviews of their colleagues, looking at logbooks, be that operating room logbooks or personal logbooks. And then at level four, we're looking for um, overall impact on institutional or organisational or national changes in practice and then improved patient outcomes. There's one high impact uh, journal publication on the um, outcomes of the Safe Pediatric Anesthesia course and this was published in Anesthesia in 2019 where we looked at the impact in five uh, countries in East and Central Africa. Those countries were Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, Uganda and Zambia. We had about almost 400 participants in all, all these courses and initially the knowledge and skills of all the participants increased significantly. And then the authors went back to visit the participants in their workplace three to six months later and showed that the knowledge and skill improvement was still retained. And then content analysis from the interviews with the participants highlighted several positive behaviour changes, particularly in the areas of preparation and perioperative care, resuscitation and the management of the sick child and in communication. Now, this is the only currently the only available publication on the impact of safe paediatric anaesthesia, but the safe obstetric anaesthesia course has got a number of uh, publications showing impact, including one that I was involved in that looks at the impact at 12 to 18 months after the course in two countries, Congo Brazzaville and, and Madagascar. These are a couple of examples of what participants said about their change of practice in, in Malawi. One participant said that all patients now get weighed. In other words, before they're admitted to the ward, they go from the outpatient department to the scales for an accurate weight, which is important for our administration of medication in paediatrics. And then from the scales, they go to the ward. Another participant reported that all breastfeeding children are now routinely starved from 4am rather than midnight, which is, of course, important to reduce starvation times in children and reduce the instances of things like hypoglycemia. And another participant reported an increase in confidence in giving medication to their to children, so they'd started giving analgesia to all their patients, whereas before they reported it was very sporadic. So where's the course going in the future? Well, like many initiatives, we've moved in, moving towards a more digital and online format, particularly in this COVID era. We delivered the first um, online course in India uh, early this year using Zoom as the platform medium. And that was really primarily driven by the Indian trainers and had one or two of us from England that were helping support the course, particularly technologically. And we're also developing a complete online model as well alongside our colleagues that are working in safe obstetric anaesthesia course and probably in the future will involve some sort of hybrid courses where the knowledge can be taught over an online platform whereas the skills probably need to be taught more in person and then we're looking to develop more courses so as i said earlier there's a good example of reverse innovation where the safe paediatric anaesthesia course that was developed really for primarily a low middle income country setting has now actually been run um, in an adapted version in, in the UK on a couple of occasions. The third time was just before COVID hit, so it had to be cancelled. And that course, which is more appropriate for a slightly high income setting, is now being developed in um, with our partners, WFSA partners in Japan and Vietnam and Cambodia. And we're also working with just another NGO, Smile Train, to develop a specific course for uh, safer surgery and anaesthesia with cleft lip and palate surgery. So the number of initiatives to expand the course and, and develop the work. So I hope this has given you um, a little illustration of what the Safe Pediatric Anaesthesia course has achieved in the last seven years. I think it's achieved a good global reach and we've got some good evidence of impact. And if anyone wants to know any more about these courses, then please feel free to get in touch with um, the WFSA at this email address uh, that you can see here. Thank you very much.